Hi, I am Dr. Eve Wu, and I am a pediatric rheumatologist and immunologist at the University of North Carolina. I help care for patients with rare immunologic disorders like APDS. APDS was first described in 2013, and in the medical world, that is recent enough that we are still learning how many people have this rare genetic condition. But it is currently estimated to occur in one person per one million people worldwide. APDS is a complex disease and it can cause problems throughout the body, the immune system, the respiratory and digestive systems, the ability to learn and even to grow can all be impacted by the disease. Furthermore, APDS can affect the immune system in two different ways. It can cause the immune system to not work as well as it should, called deficiency, or to work differently than it should, called dysregulation. Given the wide array of manifestations, APDS symptoms can vary greatly from person to person. In some patients, symptoms are mild or varied enough that a physician has not yet been able to connect all the dots to make the APDS diagnosis. These patients may therefore not know that they have a genetic disorder that could be inherited by their children. In other cases, APDS symptoms are quite severe starting from birth. In either case, the wide range of symptoms over time can make the accurate diagnosis of APDS quite challenging. For example, when APDS causes the immune deficiency, patients are prone to recurrent infections. These infections can range in severity and they can show up in many places, like the nose, ears, lungs, or even chronically in the lymph nodes. Patients may therefore look for help from more than one type of doctor. These infections can also continue over time and cause damage to organs. And this new level of damage may require help from additional doctors. Furthermore, when APDS causes immune dysregulation, patients may have autoimmune issues like a certain type of low blood count or chronically swollen lymph nodes or a swollen spleen. In these cases, patients may be referred to a certain type of doctor called a hematologist. The challenge then becomes for these multiple doctors to put together all these individual pieces to get to the ultimate cause, APDS. Finding the right doctor as early as possible is really important. A qualified immunologist in particular may be able to assist in making the diagnosis or in coordination of care. Myself and my hospital, and many like it, are currently collaborating with others to better classify the disease and help other doctors identify patients with APDS. The root cause of APDS's various signs and symptoms is the genetic errors, and ultimately a diagnosis of APDS may depend on a genetic test. Now, a, getting a genetic test can sound intimidating, but it doesn't have to be. There are genetic counselors available to you to help interpret the results with your doctor. But an accurate diagnosis is critical for fighting this disease. APDS usually worsens significantly over time, but identifying it early and getting on appropriate treatment can make a real difference. While there currently is no FDA-approved APDS therapeutic, Research is ongoing to develop new treatments that will improve the outcomes of patients with APDS. A patient with APDS may need regular antibiotics, immunoglobulin infusions to prevent infections, or therapies for autoimmune issues. APDS can have a big impact on patients and their families. The variety of symptoms, multiple treatments, and frequent doctor visits can all take a toll. A support group can help. Joining a support group and sharing your experience with others can help reduce stress and can also help you feel more in control. So you can learn more about APDS at allaboutapds.com.